Oh, the Gadsden House. Yeah, there's a thing. It was a toothless appellation maid. Um, she could be beautiful, but in truth she was not at the time. It was given as a wedding present by um, a Christopher Gadsden, a revolutionary war hero with a somewhat dark and unrecorded past um, that we've become aware of to his, uh, his son-in-law and daughter, uh, built about 1798. For Charleston, it was one of the larger antebellum mansions in town and it had been for sale for around 10 years, something like that. Christopher Gadsden served on the Marine Committee, um, which was in, uh, in charge of the newly formed Continental Navy. And at that time, he designed the Gadsden flag in 1775 for the US Navy. And it features a coiled rattlesnake, as well as the quote, don't tread on me. The house stayed in the Gadsden family throughout the early 1800s. In the 1990s, an agreement between um, Historic Charleston Foundation and Gadsden House LC um, turned the Gadsden House into a private medical leech museum owned by Dr. Roy Sawyer. An interesting fellow owned it. He'd made his money from the pharmacological uses of leech saliva. So the house actually had a leech museum and a, and a bleeding museum in it full of lots of things that looked like soup bowls that apparently held pints and pints of Georgian blood in their time. He, he didn't need the money especially, um, but he did want to sell. He, he was getting on uh, rather in years and living with his wife now in, in South Wales, um, in, in the UK. So what we did was he approached him with a deal where we would put whatever it took to convert it into what it should have been, and he owner financed with a balloon in three years' time. So I, I guess I'd call that a win-win. At that time before we began, the building was converted into apartments as well as office spaces for local businesses. We'd looked at this place uh, a number of times and couldn't quite find a good application for it. it. It had a very limited number of rooms. They were huge rooms, um, 16, 18 feet high ceilings. It'd be very grand in its time, but you couldn't subdivide, you couldn't put elevators in. Historic Charleston Foundation had easements both inside and out. Because of the interior easement, the elevator would have ruined the, um, the footprint of the historic portion of the house. And then at the same time, having an elevator shaft on the exterior would have, would have had a negative impact on the aesthetics of the exterior. So you're, you're dealing with an administrative nightmare. Um, it was under repaired, there was a lot of deferred maintenance, it was under rented, so it was unmortgageable. I think it would be difficult for this house to become a private residence again, so transforming it into a commercial use has been always the goal, but it's been hard to find the right owner um, and the right use for the property. And having this space be used and restored as an events venue actually was a really perfect fit um, because it was uh, it didn't have as much of a negative impact on the historic fabric in the building. The Gaston House project has been an awesome one to undertake, um, knowing that we align ourselves with uh, people in the community that are like-minded or have an um, approach that is in, in line with our vision. Uh, we do that. We source out those opportunities. Uh, a great candidate that we aligned ourselves with was uh, the King Street Hospitality Group. Uh, they handle all of our bookings. Um, insurance and event planning as far as the bar setup. Um, having that relationship makes my job easy, uh, just focusing on the finance and the day-to-day -day numbers. I have been looking at that house for a year and a half, two years. I talked to Mike, who is one of the owners, um, who is also the owner of our company, um, that we wanted a new venue. We have two other places and we wanted to keep expanding our spaces in Charleston. It's growing. It's the number one destination wedding city in the country. Um, so it's a prime. I'm losing my, my mind. A prime spot. spot. Yeah. Good market right now. Yes. Um, and so we have been looking at that for a while. We met Chris Lee James, Luxury Simplified, partnered on that. And that's how we became involved. The Gasson House was starting in the fourth quarter of uh, last year um, and acquired, I would say, roughly 
in uh, October. Um, began some preliminary phases on the site, you know, at the end of October, and it really hit full speed at the turn of the year. The risk with historic renovations, and it always is a risk, is you never really know what you're dealing with until you strip the bandages off. There's a wedding in three weeks there, right? There is, yes. <laughs> Do you know something we don't know? <laughs> I mean, you guys know something I don't know, because I've seen that place, and I don't know. There's gonna, you know, there's gonna be a wedding. Um, surprisingly, the bride and groom thus far have been very laid back. Um, they are from Charleston, so they can ride by every day and see the progress. Um, it may not be perfect, but we're not gonna not have that wedding there. We started initial demolition and, and investigation work in November last year. Um, we had to wait for city permits, so the actual construction didn't start for another four months or so. The front end was a little slow just getting through city ordinance um, with the help of a historic Charleston Foundation and others being able to move. Um, you know, when you have guys in line to do, to, to do work for you, and uh, if you're delayed, then they move on to other projects, which creates a different timeline gap. And, uh, you know, if that timeline isn't met, there's other residual costs, you know, that come into play that you, you have to factor. Well, there were practical challenges, such as the usual termites. You always find those. Um, there's no point in even doing a termite inspection. You, you know the little darlings are going to be there, and you have to deal with that. And there were physical constraints such as uh, Historic Charleston um, Foundation had easements that we needed to satisfy the requirements of those easements. Building codes sometimes had contradictory requirements um, for sprinkler systems, for example, that we had to get into the building but without it damaging beyond uh, the minimum the historic fabric of that building. It was a process to, to just kind of work through the ins and outs, make sure everyone was in compliance. Um, making sure I had full detail of the documentation, obviously being a historic building, uh, we qualify for federal historic tax credits uh, as well as state credits. And it's a busy city right now, there are a lot of cranes working and a very few um, staff in the permitting departments, so that took some five months to get final permits, although we got a hard end date and a wedding is booked for three weeks from now being the 1st of August. You know, I could honestly say we had probably between 60 to 100 people on site working on this building, um, roughly about 40 direct subs and then their staff. Sometimes it's difficult or scary for homeowners to, who have an interior easement. Um, they're concerned about all the restrictions and the review of any changes that they want to the interior. There's original wood lath and plaster throughout the house here at Gadsden and we've endeavored to preserve it wherever we could. So anytime that there had to be a removal of the original plaster, we then went back with wood lath and a scratch coat of plaster, which is what you see here, and then there'll be another two or three coats of lime plaster mortar that will go on top of uh, this scratch coat. I worked with Chris and Tim Sites throughout the project. Um, as my job as the easement manager, I have to review all changes to the, the building. And the objective was really to make sure that all of these changes would be appropriate to the historic building and that as much historic material was retained um, throughout the, the restoration project. I, I think with a project of this size, is 8,000 square feet. You have to be sympathetic to the past, but given it's going to be an event space with capacity nearing 500, you have to be able to deal with that as well. So for example, the piazzas, although structurally they were sound, we still stripped them off because we have 40 or 50 people dancing um, rhythmically on the piazzas, having had quite a lot of alcohol, they're just not made to take that physical load. The columns were in um, pretty bad shape and so uh, we want the, for preservation, the main philosophy is to keep as much 
historic material as possible and, and then just patch as much as you can. We had a site visit from the Board of Architectural Review who uh, told us that we couldn't replace the, the columns, we had to repair them. So in order to do that, we ordered solid pieces of, of wood from a, a local mill shop. Um, and then we scarf the pieces into the existing columns. Two feet up on all of the columns have been replaced, uh, as well as column bases and plinth blocks and all new railing system. Um, the windows, we took 52 220 year old windows out because thermally they really weren't very good at all. We've removed each of the sashes. Uh, we put them in a steam box so that we could remove the glazing. Uh, all the paint, uh, then we've reinserted all the original glass and glaze and then put them back into the window. Here in the second floor parlor of Gaston House, uh, it's the largest room in the house uh, with 16 foot ceilings. Unfortunately, it was largely destroyed by Hurricane Hugo, uh, so all the uh, original plaster and lath uh, was removed and uh, new drywall was installed. When we found the house, there was no crown or no trim uh, in this particular room, and so we painstakingly recreated all of the trim on each of the windows, and the crown, as you see around, is uh, seven different pieces. One of the things that was important and called out specifically in the covenant document was that the fireplace mantles were retained and protected. The fireplace mantle that was installed after Hugo was an off-the-shelf fireplace mantle that you could buy at any lumber store. Uh, we took photographs of all the other mantles throughout the house and had one of our craftsmen recreate a new mantle with much more detail. We took that drawing and uh, uh, worked with the Historic Charleston Foundation to approve the design and then recreated something that I think is absolutely magnificent and uh, is certainly uh, appropriate to the uh, style of home here. Most of the medallions that you see on the ceilings disappeared over time and Luxury Simplified actually custom made um, all of the medallions you see on the ceilings. When we found the house, there were no medallions in any of the main rooms. Uh, so we hired uh, architectural plasterer uh, Mike Lauer to recreate uh, some ceiling medallions uh, both here in the main parlor and each of the other rooms. And this is just a sample of the template to get a, a sense of the size, this is 60 inches wide, that will go in the middle of the ceiling from which the, hand, the chandelier will hang. Here on the third floor, we're turning this room into a bridal suite, uh, essentially where the bride and her bridesmaid can get ready for a wedding. So we've uh, set aside a very large room that will finish uh, as, a, as a living room, as a living space. Uh, around the corner here, we will have full kitchen and a uh, full bath. That brick wall was in pretty poor condition. Um, apparently over the years some woman had been taking the bricks for her house somewhere. <laughs> and um, so there were a lot of missing bricks and apparently Chris had to go find the bricks from other locations to replace them to rebuild the wall but that was a pretty substantial rebuild because there were sections where you could see all the way through the wall. How the garden is built is another story entirely so with those we wanted to make sure that we didn't break the bluestone that we just laid so the guys actually came in and did the whole sub base for the um, bluestone courtyard and it's a rather geometrical challenge a lot of it has to be laid out really relying on the principles of geometry and less on the dimension. Then we had the guy uh, that was doing the trees come in and put all those palms that we wouldn't be able to get to after the bluestones laid. The Gadsden Gate, that was um, starting to have a lot of issues with corrosion and um, there was a lot of rust on the gate and the amount of work that they did to restore that gate is impressive. I'm always excited when, you know, to see Philip Simmons gates around Charleston and, you know, we were able to restore his gates on the building so that will have a history in itself. This has been a really fun project to work on just because I actually kind of like they have this when the restoration or the rehab work first started, they have this 
big screen to protect pedestrians from construction on the piazza and it was the coolest um, protective screen that I've ever seen because they put, it was like a graphic arts and it had pictures of these Victorian women on the piazza. But that was a really artistic way and a attractive way to hide a construction project. I think that some of the creativity has been, been interesting. We pulled off our first wedding. We made it work, just like we said we would. Not everything was completely done, but the bride had no idea, so that was what was most important. There's little things here and there that are behind the scenes that have to get finished, but it's a work in progress, and it's also an old home, so there's always gonna be work to be done and updates to be done, but a lot of people walk through here and are amazed at how new and fresh it feels, especially ones who came through in February, March, and they saw completely gutted and construction work everywhere. So it's a nice treat for all of us to walk through and get these events going. So that was our first wedding. Um, and then since then we've had actually quite a few other events, but I've got quite a few weddings here this month and then next month as well. Next spring is booking up quickly, and then next fall is totally booked for Saturdays um, for weddings, which is great. I and mean, this is truly more than I even thought that it would be when we came and toured the house back in November, almost a year ago. I mean, I couldn't imagine everything from the details to the lighting to outside the courtyards and the gardens. I mean, it is, it's a beautiful venue, and it's definitely number one in town. Not just from my opinion, but a lot of people in town think so too. So it's above and beyond my expectations. I think with, um, with one of these projects, you've also got to look it in the round um, and say both what I want to do and, and what do I want to leave behind. My work now will outlive me by a long chalk when my name is forgotten. Uh, and, and it is right to do things properly. Sometimes that, that costs a little more. Um, sometimes it doesn't, surprisingly. Um, with the Gadsden House, uh, as an example, we have stripped back every single improvement, probably in the last 80 years. It's gone. Uh, we were down to the studs, and we need not have taken it that far, but we couldn't have done it as well without doing that. I would say the budget was close to being in line, but whenever you're dealing with a historic renovation, there are things that you don't see. Um, even if you're you know, pretty strong on your budget, I know we're going to do these items, but when you pull a wall down and start moving items, you know, that, that changes things. So we were very close on our budget, um, but the things that exceeded the budget were where the cost items and you know, the, the three investors had no, no problem you know, making those things happen. The end result was, is beautiful. I think the heart and pain of just going through the process and making sure that, um, like I said, the compliance was there, um, the subs were um, legitimate in uh, their services and their documentation. Um, but just being able to come on site and, okay, say, I, I just spent $200,000, what did I spend it on? And being able to see it come to life, you know, the house uh, took its own character. It always was a wedding gift, and now it's seen more weddings. That's it, this is the Gadsden House, it's nearly a wrap. More than a thousand hours of labor a week, 2,200 year old bricks we had to find, 14 tons of concrete to hide inside a historic house, a half a ton of lime, 2,000 feet of 200 year old heart pine to match the original. Uh, we made fireplaces, we made windows, crown moldings, we made medallions, we made doors all to match and built the place to the standard you would a school or a hospital because of the utility and the amount of use that it's going to have, and yet still maintain some of the historic character of the place. It was uh, probably the biggest one in the city this year. Not the biggest piece of construction, but the biggest historic renovation. Uh, lots of eyes on us, which is a tad nerve wracking for our team, but we, we got away with it. Yes, I think the project was a, a big success. We're really excited about the transformation of this building. Um, for many years, I was kind of worried about the, the way it looked and just it just didn't seem to be reaching its full potential. But now, especially I drive down East Bay Street every morning and I see that chandelier that's lit up usually every morning and it just sparkles and the building is alive again. Uh, and we'll hand this particular house on. Uh, it was one of the 10 that they really worried about. There is no need to worry anymore.